Well, definitely a lot is happening in Indian football. And if you heard our last episode, we did speak about the current mess that we are at, uh, the FIFA suspension. But uh, we are looking forward to some good news in the coming days as we are expecting for it to be revoked. As we all know, that the Supreme Court has probably given back uh, the reins of running the football body back to AIFF and there would be due elections and all of that is getting set. And uh, well, we're not going to talk about that today. Uh, as always, things will have keep happening on the sides. Uh, but our show called the Total Indian Football Show will continue having people and sharing their stories and their journey uh, in Indian football. Today, I have a very special guest and uh, you're listening to, well, I already said what you're listening to, the Total Indian Football Show with me, your host. And I have a dear friend who I can call a dear friend, Mangesh Desai. Um, he's a familiar face, a uh, familiar person known for th- all those in Mumbai football, in Maharashtra football, I must say. He's been an administrator, a coach, a scout, a talent development officer, many, 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 many things. Uh, and I think we'll unravel all of that on today's episode. But first, let me welcome uh, Mangesh. Welcome to the show. Hi, Shizu. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, really happy to be here. Um, really looking forward to chatting with you. Great. So let's get started now. Let's talk about probably something more recent, right? The last we spoke was uh, when you got this opportunity to go work with Real Kashmir FC. Um, so someone from, you know, being in Maharashtra football and very heavily involved in Mumbai football. And then suddenly you had to like leave all of that and go up north. Uh, and it's a very interesting project for sure. Uh, but even your role was as much as interesting as the whole place and everything, the beauty around it. But if you can tell us more about your experience, we'll start with that and then we'll go a little behind, you know, a little backwards to your journey and ahead as well. But if you can tell us about that experience. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, yeah, last season I was with uh, Real Kashmir. It was uh, an interesting experience, yes, because given the region, given the dynamics of the region, it's it's not, it's, it's i mean you have to be there to to see it uh, it's it's a very different uh, environment uh, something that gets you take some time to get used to uh, of, of course uh, the the culture the football is is there um, although uh, because of all the political and the other uh, issues it gets sort of sidetracked but uh, in my experience the, the 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 one year that i spent there it was really fruitful and uh, 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 interesting learnings uh, in terms of the football uh, it's it's uh, very very uh, different from from what we are used to outside of uh, maybe maybe in maharashtra or south or goa if you go it's it's a very different brand of football uh, but interesting nonetheless um, of course uh, the the place of like you mentioned absolutely stunning and uh, the the kind of uh, venues we went to the uh, the the crowds the local games uh, it was it was it was an amazing experience yes we had a tough outing in the i league but yeah learnings yes right, i'm going to pick on a few things that you mentioned one is you mentioned about a different set of football you saw like a difference a different set as compared to uh, down south or in the western region if you can explain a little more what is that difference uh well if you if you look at it uh, sort of tactically uh, uh the, the football that uh, uh, is played in a, in a in a region it largely depends on uh, you know the physical features of the people there the kind of culture they have the kind of uh, cr- football the crowd likes to see so it was it was a bit different in terms of it is very direct it is quite physical uh, compared to other parts it is very uh, i i won't say it is very technically sophisticated but it is very physical and very uh, direct which is which is a style of football uh, which probably the people like to see they like to see action they like to see uh, goal mouth action uh, they don't want uh, teams to keep possession just just for the sake of it but because maybe like i said that is how how uh, what the, the kind of players they have that the, the kind of physical structure they have uh, that is their strength and uh, like like any any football coach would tell you you always play to your strengths and uh, that that is how they are effective 
and that is how uh, even 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 uh, if you if you look at players who have made it to the national team uh, those are the kind of players that you look for uh, from the north uh, and kashmir is is no different uh, also also i think i think uh, uh, mentally they are very very resilient of course given given the situation that they face uh the 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 the, the boys that the, the even the under 18s and the 15s the boys that i uh, worked with they are very resilient uh, they don't give up easily they 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 fight for every cause and uh, that's 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 something that you see in their football as well well those are indeed some interesting points mangesh that you bring up um, and also i'm sure like learning should be a lot more because even geographically like you mentioned uh, you were going from all the way from down south to up north uh, but now another point that i want to ask was when we see from outside a place you know and when you are hearing a lot of news about it uh, things kind of change when you go in when you're actually in that place uh, so was there so what was that like for you because we heard so much about kashmir we heard so much about uh, the politi- political side of things uh, and then you know there's this football club happening there but uh, when you were actually there part of everyday life uh, speaking to them speaking to people from there involving in that sport how was how, did any dif- did you, uh, any difference happen post that while you were there and what was that like well uh, the the day i landed uh, the very next week there was a 10 day curfew because uh, uh, some ex politician from certain party who passed away so i i was in the room for almost 10 days so that was sort of a reality check for me as soon as i got there uh, but yeah football for like like most places it's uh, it's, it's something that um, you know brings people from different uh, beliefs together football is is the universal sort of binder so brings people together so uh, they have a certain uh, soft spot when it comes to football so uh, generally football games football training sessions matches uh, aren't something that are affected but of course uh, if if there is a general curfew of course there nobody can step out so then 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 that's that's about it but when it comes to football like i said uh, since i interacted with uh, people from different backgrounds from different uh, uh, leanings so everyone when it comes to football like i said they they they, uh, they understood they they accepted of course um, uh, some there were some people who weren't really uh, uh, pro indian football but when it comes to football uh, they they were all uh, uh, excited and and when when we went for matches and uh, games uh, they would always uh, support us uh, because because also we had a lot of kashmiri players in our team so yes uh, it it's it's not uh, like i said it's not uh, straight forward as other places but uh, football has a special special place right now let's go back you know probably where you all started it all started for you personally um mangesh if you can take us through how did you get into the whole football scene and also became that popular face or go to person for mumbai football uh, well i won't say popular face but yeah uh, since i was there at uh, wfn aff so yeah uh, i had Uh, that responsibility of promoting the game in the state so yeah uh, started off uh, like most most of us who start off playing football with our friends with with within our uh, uh, local teams and so that's how i uh, that was how i got introduced to football uh, so yeah something that caught my fancy really enjoyed playing football uh, played at a certain de- decent level in mumbai and other other places uh and then coaching was something that uh, really interested me early on uh, and around around when i was 27 28 i started taking uh, looking at coaching attending coaching courses workshops uh, and try to uh, understand how how teams work how team dynamics work how uh, you know how you can set up a team to achieve a certain target it was something that really fascinated me and that's how i got into coaching although other year uh, it's it it wasn't something that you did full time at least around 10 12 years ago when i started it was not uh, something that um, the opportunities weren't 
uh, as I would say as they are uh, these days. So yeah, I used to work and then on weekends and whenever I got free time, I used to uh, go on the ground, uh, work with coaches, try and see how how they do their uh, sessions and try and learn from them, and then try and implement them uh, within the whichever uh, team or setup that I had a chance to. And then um, I got a l- uh, lucky break, I would say, when it when Manchester United Soccer School came to India, and they uh, planned to start a soccer school here in uh, Mumbai. And I just happened to be there, and it's just you know sometimes you just have to uh, be there at the right time at the right place. And I was there. I uh, went through the interview process and got a chance to work with the Manchester United Soccer School, which was. Uh, quite interesting and uh, which really uh, you know put me uh, on the path of taking up coaching or even thinking about taking up coaching uh, as as a full time role right now you mentioned yes coaching was something that interested you and you got into it uh, also uh, you know but when you ask people who know you um, you know who know about you they always say that mangesh is a better scout or he's really has a good eye for you know scout as a scout um what do you have to say about that and you know and have you n- taken up the scouting gigs and how is that like uh well yeah uh, yeah some scouting is something that is really um, close to my heart because i suppose uh, i i mean the, the way i am i don't uh, sort of judge people too early i give them a chance in general as well so i think that that shows in my uh, um, football scouting as well because uh it's it's easier to get you know uh, when you're scouting or when you're looking for talent it's easier to get um uh, uh, delusioned and uh, you know sort of not uh, uh predict what is probably what could probably happen and just see what you uh, uh what is happening in front of you so uh scouting is something that i still do not not uh, uh full time but yes as part of my job it is still an important aspect of my current role as well uh but yeah like i said it's uh, it's about uh, not like i said not judging too quickly giving the players uh, enough chance and trying to uh, predict what could pro- probably happen in the coming years rather than judging someone uh on what you see right now you've been an administrator also you also mentioned that you know you are working with wefa and aiff closely especially in maharashtra football scene so there is people when you when they look at maharashtra as a whole they, they don't always look at okay is it a footballing state or not or it does have footballing regions and pockets um but mumbai did have once upon a time a great footballing history and culture when you look back right with the whole the number of clubs that were here um and there was competition there was all of that uh what do you think has probably yes at this point in time right now as we are recording maybe the buzz is back again there are local clubs there are things happening as well uh but why do you think there was such a big gap while you know maybe some other states were growing and why uh was probably maharashtra the state falling downwards uh well i i in my personal opinion there's obviously there's no one reason the there are many reasons why uh, obviously like you mentioned uh the glory days uh, we had i think almost three or four teams in the i league at one stage uh including pune so yeah th- those even even beyond be, before that whether it's mahindra or in, air india so those those teams were the like real backbone of mumbai and maharashtra football because players used to look forward to you know uh, some day representing those teams and uh, sort of a pathway towards the national team or other other teams so yeah uh, maybe in my opinion see in in mumbai it's it's not Uh, it's not uh, easy right uh, compared to other places uh, financially also it's it's uh, difficult sometimes to keep teams teams running and uh, it's not a very obviously uh, business wise it's not a very viable uh, solution but uh, i think i think like last season king craver in the i league uh, which is fantastic for mumbai and uh, maharashtra football uh, they, they they were like the torch bearers for uh, mumbai football 
in the i league unfortunately uh, uh, they had to face relegation but at least at least the the presence was there which uh, i think i think is very much needed uh, at the top level and if you see now uh, i think mumbai football mdfa they have done a fantastic job in sort of um, promoting the local leagues the um, uh, uh, district leagues and hopefully someone might come forward and uh, put up a, put up a very strong team in the, in the domestic circuit uh, i am i'm hopeful this wave of uh, football that has uh, uh, you know be, uh, that we have seen in mumbai and other parts of uh, maharashtra uh, is somehow represented on on the national stage because uh, wherever i go uh, all over the country uh, they all they all know what is mumbai football or kolhapur football or uh, you know pune football but if there is a club that represents that region it makes a totally different uh, impact so yeah, i'm i'm hopeful uh, someone who's uh, obviously capable and someone who's really passionate about the game um, comes up with a project that truly really represents mumbai and maharashtra football and puts maharashtra football on the uh, national stage yeah now as someone who's worked in the whole circuit and you know you've been away from the whole maharashtra foot, mumbai football scene you were with the real kashmir for a year and now uh, you're again going to leave uh, the state and the city to another project that's in punjab if you can tell us more about that uh, about the team there about your role and what you're going to be like yeah uh, so i'll be joining united punjab very soon uh, as a technical director and the head coach for their senior team so yeah it's it's an interesting project uh, they have a residential academy set up uh, almost 200 300 250 uh, players from different age groups and they really want to make an impact like i said on the national stage so hopefully uh, i league second division this season or if not this maybe next season and then uh, get get into the i league uh in the next 3 years so it's an interesting project uh, for me because uh, it's something that i have to build from from this from scratch and that is something that i find very challenging and very uh, rewarding if if we get there in the next 3 years that would be amazing uh also they have uh, they they have sort of uh, the the kind of facilities that you need to get there uh they have on grounds uh gym swimming pool you name it and it's there i think that's that's coming back to your previous question that those kind of facilities and those kind of um, infrastructure uh it's not not uh, always possible in places like mumbai or pune or the, the real estate the situation of course you know how how it is but it is it is uh, it is it is an interesting project and uh, hopefully hopefully uh, we can you know really uh, get uh, I, i mean i could play a part in bringing that club to uh, a, a good level right you mentioned like you're also going to be the coach but i'm going to more focus on the technical director role that's the question on those lines what you know i always ask people whoever take this role up of a technical director because uh, i think in indian football uh, largely culminating all of that we've seen with its isli league uh, the technical director is such a loose word right um, i mean nobody really knows what a td does uh, i don't know if and people just hire uh, a td because maybe you know clubs do need that role and you know it's it's too fancy uh, it, yeah, it's, it's it's yeah i mean it's too fancy not to have maybe uh and uh, because then you're like you're also rushing into the whole role uh what i have one thing if i want to say about td is that uh the person whoever you're hiring needs to have one the credentials of course what you're looking for the other is you need to give the person time um uh, it can't be one year or a month time where and that that person can't do much about it but anyway i'll keep my opinion aside but now that you're entering into this role and you've you spent enough time in the football ecosystem so what according to you should a td's role comprise of yeah this, this is the exact uh, discussion i had with the team management when they offered the role and that is the reason why i told them if if i do take up this role it it should be at least for 3 years because if if you want me there if you want me to make a difference then any time 
like like you rightly said it can't be done in in a, in a season or two so three three seasons or three years is is a good enough time to have uh, you know share share ideas put put a system in place and uh, then hopefully uh, look for results because uh, i think i think as 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 uh, as a culture as people i think uh, we are becoming very um, impatient with everything we want instant instant success and instantly you know things to happen but uh, that that's not how things work so like 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 i said uh, so it's a three year uh, project for me uh, so what what i would like to do or what uh, in my opinion technical director role encompasses is 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 uh, is putting a structure in place so but to put a structure in place you 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 ought to have a, a first team a senior team and then the whole academy training and the whole uh, the way that players are trained and uh, the the philosophy and everything that happens uh, everything that the players go through uh, throughout their training is uh, keeping in mind what is expected of them from the senior team so the technical director and the head coach of the uh, club have to be on the same page so like like you said right now the role is is very uh, quite loose and it's not it it just it is just something that you know clubs and academies they do to tick 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 a box but uh, that's not it's not how it is it's 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 a long it's a long term process uh, and getting players to play a certain style to play a certain way which uh, then seamlessly you get into the first team and like like every every team like every uh, club has a a certain style of play a certain um, culture a certain uh, way the team plays uh, their, their identity sort of their identity so getting those players to play that that football getting the players to fit into the first team generally that's what technical directors or uh, head of youth the role is so uh, hopefully i can i can uh, like i said i have to start there from scratch uh, build the first team and then try and put a structure in place to develop players to be able to play in that first team right now you did mention that the role is challenging and is interesting uh, it's a new project and you get to work from the scratch but apart from these things if i had to ask you what was that probably one of you maybe either it can be one or more than that uh, that actually pushed you to say yes to this, this to this project uh yeah i mean uh, it is it is uh, it is something that i haven't done before uh, so it i thought it would be something uh, you know new something and uh, i've not worked in punjab either so punjab football is something that uh, i'm not really uh, aware of or had the chance to experience uh, so yeah that that is what uh, prompted me to you know look at it and uh, try and uh see how how uh, i can uh, be part of it but uh, i i've been to the place it's it's an a, a absolutely fantastic uh, infrastructure and uh, uh, they have players from all all over the country it's not just not just in punjab but they have players from all over the country and uh, the, the kind of training the kind of um, nutrition and I, everything is taken care of and uh, hopefully like i said uh, if i could play a part in developing a player to the state to the to the top level national team that would be something very rewarding and that's that's why i thought i i, I could give it a shot right now i mean as a whole to sum up i mean for for you as a person also you know, on this journey of exploring new things also uh, to that you know you went to kashmir now you went to punjab uh, it is definitely interesting projects that you're taking up but if you had to look back at all the experiences that you've gathered so far what are your biggest learnings um it can be footballing terms or otherwise also uh, well my my biggest learning in at least uh, since i've been in football or sports is um you have to uh sort of not be very picky and choosy about about what you do in in the, in, in the sense that uh uh the way the way sports is in india especially uh, the way the 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 whole sports uh, infrastructure the whole sports market is uh, it's 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 
we are in sports we are in 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 football we are in sports for one reason we are all passionate about sports and we are all passionate about football and that is something that we always have to remember and and uh, take up assignments take up projects that really interest you and really uh, push you to your limits and that's uh, if 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 you have to be out of your comfort zone if you have to go somewhere else uh, you know sacrifice stay away from family you have to do it it's because i've seen a lot of times players coaches uh, they, they sort of uh, are unwilling to you know step out of their comfort zone and try and stay where they are so uh, but it's it's not always possible especially not in in our uh, environment and uh, you you have to push yourself you have to take chances you have to step out and experience gain that experience uh, meet people network that, that's that's how you grow i think uh, you've put down put down so well because your entire journey is what you just summed up and you know even even you take it up as an advice you you are somebody who's walked the talk already so it's good to see that uh, but before i let you go i have to nudge you on the situation that we are in right uh, what is your overall take or your thoughts for someone who you've been working in this uh, like i said the indian football ecosystem of whatever we went through or are going through right now uh with the mess at uh the top uh what are your thoughts your initial thoughts and what do you think as person working here uh would happen or should happen well uh, uh like you said at the start it's these things happen uh on the side we have to uh, live with it but uh, i think i think uh, everyone has to protect their interests uh whether it's fifa whether it's aiff uh they have to look at it uh, you know from from a long term perspective and not just uh, short term because fifa is very clear on their mandate and their uh, regulations because they cannot have uh, you know uh, exceptions for one region and then uh, because then they they they, they have a there are a lot of members they cannot keep changing regulations for everyone so they 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 have their they are their you know uh, uh, right on their place uh but we have like we have to look at ourselves we have to see what is the right uh, path for us in terms of uh, development now uh, we all talk about qualifying for the world cup and you know uh, seeing our team in the at the highest level uh but in my opinion that shouldn't be the parameter for uh, success especially for india because our, our our country is very different from uh, the other countries we have uh, i mean I, i tell people if if kerala had the chance to per, qualify for world cup they would qualify before india so that's just my my opinion but uh, yeah like i said we have to look at ourselves we have to look at what is the best course of action for us if uh, and 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 i i, I believe uh, sports uh, i i want to sports and politics should be different because uh, uh, if you understand politics and if you under, understand sports they are sort of intertwined they are not they are not separate you cannot separate sports from politics because uh it it's it's like two sides of the same coin so uh yes of course but uh the interference the if if people are trying to take advantage of it that shouldn't be something that uh, should be promoted but uh it's like i said sport was an unfortunate uh, event but uh, things are getting in place hopefully uh, we have a good amount of representation from different fields players ex players um, coaches ex referees so we have a, a good mix of uh, people who who make the decision so every everyone's uh, voice is heard everyone's perspective is heard and uh, we come to a uh, you know reach a sort of common goal and everyone works towards it so hopefully hopefully things will be sorted out soon right and i mean that's all we can for we always i think from the time i've started doing podcasts on indian football i always ended with saying we hope for the best <laughs> and and we truly hope that uh, things might yes. get revoked and uh, we can all hope for the uh, whatever is happening keeps on happening like i said and we have to keep continuing what we do but finally Yeah, those those things happen yeah. aside. We just continue what yeah, we're doing. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Mangesh, thank you so much for taking time out, and uh, I'm really glad to have finally done this. 
uh, it was due for a very long time with all your experiences and your stories and your journeys i wish nothing but the best for you uh, even in the the next 3 years that you have uh, with punjab hope you gain success that you desire of thank you so much thank you so much it was an absolute pleasure yeah, thank you to all our listeners for tuning in to the totally in football show every week yes we once again probably had a delay in the release of the episode but uh, i hope uh, you still would listen to the to this one and uh, if you liked it please do share uh, it's a great story that mangesh has and you guys also have something to look forward to uh, at a project called united punjab so keep that in mind guys thank you once again for tuning in and for showering all the love i'm your host juju and signing off for the totally indian football show Thank you.